Imperial Beach lifeguards and Mayor Serge Dedina were up at dawn on a recent morning, keeping an eye on the ocean. There's not a lot we can do. Once the ocean reaches a certain level and the surf's a certain height, there's not much we can do. Seasonal high tides and an active storm cell were working together to blast coastal barriers designed to keep the ocean at bay. Large rocks didn't always succeed. The storm fueled waves regularly washed over the coastal reinforcements. Public safety officials did what they could to protect the people living here. They got out and they warned them of the danger. Once that water comes over the seawall and floods the local streets here, it still needs somewhere to go and much of it ends up right here in the Tijuana River estuary. The estuary absorbed the overflow, but the capacity is limited. This is likely to happen much more often in Imperial Beach and other low-lying communities as sea levels go up. Mark Merrifield works at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. So we know sea levels going up, but as the, you add on these wave events, what does that combined effect look like? He runs the Center for Climate Change Impacts and Adaptation, and he wants to understand how these two events, high tide and big waves, interact. He's interested in everything that's happening during this event. The sea level is so high in the estuary where it normally would drain that it's just backing up the water. So that effect is also important to measure and to document. And in a way, this is almost a, like a natural laboratory for that sort of thing. But it's the situation in the ocean that's most interesting to him. He says researchers know a lot about local tides and they have data on storm-driven waves. But there's a gap in the information when those two things happen together. Trying to get the waves from offshore to onshore during these kind of energetic wave events, there's not a lot of data. So that's why this data is so important, is to get the combination of, uh, to, to really map out one of these events in detail. Merrifield is tracking this event from many perspectives. There is an offshore wave buoy. There are monitors buried in the sand and even a drone flying overhead. And on this second floor condo balcony, researchers are using a machine that takes specific measurements using pulses of light to calculate the range of nearby objects. This distance here is uh, about 150 feet across, and this is a two-dimensional view looking straight out at the ocean. Marine technician Lucian Perry says the LIDAR equipment is sophisticated enough that it can track and record many individual waves. It can also draw a three-dimensional picture of the survey area. This uh, gray line here is the line of, that we're just looking at in the real-time view, and we pull it into three-dimensional view, and uh, these are the waves coming in and the beach. All of this information will help researchers build better predictive models about events that will likely occur more often as sea levels rise. Imperial Beach Mayor Serge Dedina says knowing more about these events will help city officials plan. What are we going to do with our sewer pump stations? What are we going to do with our roads? What are we going to do with our electric outlets? I'm working with SGG on that. We have a school that's on the bayfront. And then how are we going to actually deal with mitigating rising seas and, and increased erosion? Rising sea levels are not something the city can ignore because Dedina says the low-lying community is surrounded by the ocean, an estuary, and San Diego Bay. We're going to have to face some tough choices in what we do to address protecting our public beach and public access. So we're looking at natural solutions um, and then really protecting our infrastructure. Dedina says public property is the city's primary concern, but private property owners there also have some decisions to make as water pushes against the city's boundaries. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.